Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Casey Latchley and I'm going to show you how to do the 3D parallax effect uh, using Cinema 4D and Photoshop. Uh, I will say that the universe totally does not want me to make this tutorial because the first time I did it, my batteries died on my microphone. I didn't realize it. And when I just re-recorded it, the screen capture was recording the wrong monitor. So... Third time's a charm. Here I go. I've really got it down this time, hopefully. Uh, so you can kind of see what's going on here. So the beard is sort of... This is my buddy James, by the way. Uh, he doesn't know I'm doing this, so if you guys could uh, follow him on Instagram as uh, sort of a trade, that would be that would be pretty sweet. It's uh, His username is at GreatBigNerd, so he's got funny stuff. Um, okay, so... The way to do this is kind of just separating everything out in Photoshop and making basic geometry. Here's here's another one I did the other day, or uh, earlier today. Kind of get this is uh, a little something extra using Real Flow that I won't go into that because I barely knew how to do that. So yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So here's my image, and this is all separated out already uh, so you guys don't have to sit through and watch me clone stuff out and uh, mask things so you can see the beard is separate the background is separate and his head and body are separate so I save these out as individual files and um, the alpha and color channel are separate and I will show you why later so there's the beard and let's go into cinema for the third time. All right, so first off, let me make a camera and let's change the project setting. We gotta make sure that our aspect ratio is the same as our still that was taken. So this one is 3840 by 5760. 3840. 57.60. So we see our aspect ratio is 0.667. So we'll copy that. We'll change this to a more reasonable resolution. All right. So set in our camera, we will start off with the background and we'll make the plane, change it to Z, move our camera in position, move the plane back a little bit since it's going to be our background. Change the size of it. All right, so we're going to start off with our master image, and we're going to turn off everything but luminance because we're not working with any lights. We don't want any shadows on this, and it'll just work better for this. Uh, so I brought in the master file. We're going to drop that in on the plane and change the projection to camera mapping. And this is where our aspect ratio comes in, so we'll paste that in and drop the camera. Right, cha. I like to change the editor to something where I can see a little more detail. Um, okay, let's move it around a little bit. Untile it. Okay, so I'm just going to use this to kind of get our basic geometry set up right now. So what I'm going to do is use a loft nerb. So I'm going to use splines, and I'm going to start off with a circle, change it to XZ. And unless you're a huge, rotund, round person, you're not round. Your body is oval. So we're going to change that. I changed the Z to 0.5. And one thing is make sure that you change your camera forgot to mention this before you get started on on this you could really mess up later change your camera focal length to actually what you shot at so I changed it to 85 what you could do is go into Photoshop file info and it tells you right there 85 millimeter <clears throat> so okay see how much that changed things already it's a way better thing to do that up front okay let's scale that down all right, so we're start off at the bottom. Bring it up, duplicate, holding command down. 
Move that up. Kind of rotate this towards this posture. Alright, now we're going to get into the neck. And necks are round ish. So we'll change that back. Scale it down. And what we're trying to do is sort of envelop all the image, the body, inside these circles. So if you can use your imagination and just see that this is going in between all of these. So, but we don't need the beard right now because we're going to make that a separate geometry. So let's bring that there. Make another one, and we'll scale this one up to get his hat. And one more. And it really doesn't matter that this geometry is going to be kind of kind of shitty, but because you can pull some pretty sweet stuff off. So we kind of got like a little um, Lego man thing going on. But that's, you know, basic geometry of his body and head. We're going to put a protection tag on this camera so we don't move that around. And we'll duplicate it. Call this one motion camera. Um, okay, now we're going to do the beard. So let's start off with a, another circle. We're going to make sure this is situated in front of his neck. All right, hide that. Maybe a little too far forward. Yeah. Probably closer to like right there. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing. We'll duplicate that. Oh, crap. So these also need to be. Probably like 0.25 on this one. Beer's kind of flat. All right, and again, we want to try and cover everything. So if we don't get everything now, we can go back and adjust these in a little bit. Move it up. That's probably good. Put one there, and then one more to feather it out. See how that lined up. Eh, kind of close, kind of close. We could move it back a little bit, and we'll do another loft nerd. Kind of Santa Clausy. All right, so now it's touching. That's pretty good. Covering everything. Oh, nope. Missing a little bit at the bottom. Okay. All right. So we'll call that body head and beard. Okay. Call this one background. So now we'll start making our real material. So we'll make this the background. Make this the beard, and now is where I'll show you why you want to separate your alpha channel and your color channel. So I'm going to bring in the alpha channel, which also has color in it. So I'm going to bring that in for my alpha, okay? But I'm also going to bring it in for my luminance, my color. 
that it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and duplicate this and replace this texture with it. Hide, hide that. And so you see this white fringe around it right here? That's not supposed to be there. And that's there because the alpha channel is trying to fade out, but the color has nothing there. So it's just kind of going to white. So it'll render like that too. You see the gross, garbagey, nasty stuff right there. So the way around that is to just save out your color channel with no alpha. And in this case, we're just going to use the original image since we don't have to worry about any clone thing on this. And it's gone. Look at that. And if I turn up anti-aliasing, you'll get rid of that nasty, garbagey stuff too. Um, this is white down here just because he's wearing a white shirt, so that's fine. All right, and we'll turn this off just for speedsies. Um, I'll duplicate that. We'll bring in the body head. And where's my, there's my alpha. Butthead. Oops. Duplicate that. So we don't have to type that stuff in again. Kick my heater. Okay. So there. Now we're going to put a little move on this camera. Push in a little bit and then kind of angle up. Set a keyframe. Also, what I like to do on these ones in particular is change these from that Bezier default curve, change it to a linear. It just looks better, I think. So you, I mean, unless it's the look you're going for. Um, so you see we got the beard doing its thing. That's cool. But we also have his hat and shoulders are repeating themselves. And the reason why they're doing that because it's projecting, let's turn this up. They're projecting both front and back. So if we select these, change the side to front, cool, fixed it, right? Nope, there's still the default texture there. So the easy way to fix that, just make a transparent texture. Turn everything off except for transparency. Leave everything default so it's no refraction, just all transparent. Put that underneath and it's fixed. Super magic. Super magic. All right. Um, let me just render this out and show you where we are with this. All right. So you could stop here if you wanted to. If this is all you kind of wanted to do, then congratulations. You did it. You watched however long this tutorial is to get to here. You did it. Um, but you could totally take it way further than that. Uh, and uh, sort of bring out the geometry of the nose, push the eyes back, bring, you know, like kind of ruffle up the beard a little bit, and you get like a way more geometry that, you know, just fucking tricks your mind, man. You can, I would recommend doing this with the sculpt in cinema, but if you don't have uh, anything but the CC version of cinema, the light version, uh, you can do this with just a select mode. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. I won't go too into it, just because you'll get the idea. Um, make that, make this editable. Okay. Probably want to subdivide this a little bit more too. Maybe like one more. Okay. So, for instance, if I want to just bring the nose out, you can kind of see this is doing some wanky stuff. So you could you could really get into this. Um, if you go to soft selection, let's first pick these points out right real quick, because as soon as you go to soft selection, it's going to get rid of the texture. Um, so change the mode to soft selection. Maybe change it to like 15 or so. Pull the nose out, maybe a little bit. How about like eight? Pull the nose out. Select a couple more. Pull that out. 
Where James is getting a really wankety nose. Ooh, Pinocchio nose. But, you know, you could you could play around with that. And even that probably gets you further than you were before. Like, you kind of see it's shifting a little bit, which is good, because that's what it would naturally do. Um, so, go into that if you want to. If you do have the sculpt kit, um, I suck at it, and I still manage to do this. Um, so, I promise he doesn't have a hook nose like that in real life, but I use this all with just the pull and push tool, like just pull and then invert that, and you can kind of get this. And I'm, I'm probably going to go in, because if you can see, what I'm not happy with is his beard seems like it shifts to the left a little bit, so I'm going to go in tomorrow and sort of iron that out and maybe pull it this way. Um, but... You know, that's pretty much it. Here's the other one I did again, and um, yeah, the end. You did it.